Hello, hello friends. My name is Sive and this is Stories in Sive. This is my booktube channel where I talk about books and welcome to week three of Spoopathon. I've been vlogging throughout October for this readathon and if you've not seen my two previous weeks, go back and watch those so you can see context for what I'm doing here. I'd like to give a brief intro because I have not made a reading plan for this week so far. The only thing I have to introduce you to is my current read. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I am currently reading Book Lovers and I am working so hard to finish this in the next day or two, even though I'm only probably a third of the way through it. I need to finish it because the wave prompts for week three were released yesterday and none of them will fit this book. So I'm going to stay on the wave two tile for the second week until I finish this book. I feel like it's gonna be fine and I have the evening free for the rest of the night tonight. I'm gonna put in probably about an hour of reading. That is my goal and we'll see how far I get. Additionally, I have no plans after work tomorrow, which is a rarity and I'm so thrilled because I'm blocking off that time and I'm gonna read and finish this book on Monday. Thank you for joining me so far. I'm loving my reading experience with Spoopathon. I love the prompts. I love the idea that you can't plan ahead. Spoopy Hall, who's the host of Spoopathon, keeps saying you can't plan for a zombie apocalypse, so you can't plan your TBR. I'll keep you posted on my reading progress this week, so let's go. It is the evening. I'm back from work. I've just eaten some food and I'm so excited to settle in. I read some of Book Lovers last night and I read some while on my lunch break. And between those two reading situations, I read almost 100 pages. That means I am currently on page 227 out of 370 something. I don't know if I can read 150 pages tonight. That's kind of a lot for one evening, but when I have been reading this, I have been absolutely loving the story. I'm so invested in Nora, our main character, and her relationship with her sister Libby. There's just clearly something going on there and I'm enjoying the way that it is very carefully and very like selectively being referenced throughout the story because you know that they're good and they're fine in their relationship, but it is definitely apparent that Libby is going through something and is trying to keep Nora out of it, either to solve it on her own or because she doesn't trust Nora. And Nora is definitely the take charge, I'm very task oriented, acts of service person, she wants to fix it. She wants to fix everything and Libby isn't letting her. All that to say, I'm loving this story. I'm really trying to finish it tonight, like I mentioned, today's Monday. So we'll see how far I get in this. If you didn't watch my other vlog, I was just in the mountains this past weekend. I went camping, which means all of my luxuries stayed at home and I am a nighttime skincare routine gal. And for two evenings, I didn't do any of that. So I have a sheet mask that I'm gonna do right now. And sheet masks are great for me, that just the cleanup is a lot easier than using a paste or any sort of like formula lotion like that so my skin is in dire need of this and I'm really excited to do that so I'm gonna settle in for an evening of reading and I'm gonna do face mask hello I am joining you from Tuesday evening so a day has passed since I last updated you and I'm so pleased to tell you that I did indeed finish book lovers last night I sprint read 150 pages in like mm, I don't know, two and a half hours, and that is fast reading for me. So let me tell you my thoughts. I ended up loving this book. It was exactly what I wanted at this stage of my life and this stage in my reading. There were a lot of things about that character and what Nora was going through that really spoke to me and was very much relatable. I appreciated a lot of the insight that she brought to um, a relationship as well as some familial relationships, specifically with her sister, like I mentioned. The tone of this book was this really beautiful balance between just a regular literary contemporary novel and that romance element. I always enjoy literary fiction when I pick it up, but I don't really gravitate towards it. And this is kind of like definitely good for those who want to maybe dip their toe into literary fiction. I felt the tone was very that genre. I cried. I loved the ending. It was an absolute roller coaster and it was extremely emotional. And I, yeah, I loved it. I gave this book five stars and I am so happy because that means I will have given Emily Henry two five stars and that means she's on her way to being one of my favorite authors. And that is so exciting for me. Another book 
that I have an update on for you is the X-Hex. I didn't let you know that I was reading this audiobook yesterday, but I started it yesterday and got about 60% of the way through, and today I ended up finishing it. So there is two books for you already this week, which is great. Great for me. Two romances, two very different romances in my opinion. Book Lovers is definitely just on like its own tier. It's just like a different level. The X-Hex was great. It was very enjoyable, fun, flirty, cute, and it had that witchy element that made it perfect for October, especially for someone like me who is completely not in the mood right now to read thrillers and horror or someone who just doesn't like it in general. So it's a good, it's a good one for the spooky vibes without being like a scary book. The characters just weren't as developed. I wasn't as invested in this couple's relationship, but I will say it was enjoyable. I think I'm gonna give this a two or three star. Like it was very good, but was it exceptional? Did it blow me out of the water? Absolutely not. But definitely something I can recommend if you're looking for something flirty and definitely in that Halloween vibe. Now that I've finished those two books, I'm going to close out my time on the wave two prompt and move on to wave three. This is a list of prompts that was released this past weekend. So I have kind of maneuvered a few things around because I have a fall TBR that I would like to complete. And one of the books I'm going to be able to read for the book potions. I'm stretching this a little bit because the book I am going to use for this prompt is the audiobook of A Botanist's Guide to Parties and Poisons. Now this is definitely not a fantastical book. I believe it's a historical fiction with a mystery thriller plot line where someone has died and our main character Saffron is trying to figure out who it is. This is also taking place at a academia like setting so I don't know if it will be dark and academia to fulfill the dark academia prompt. In my opinion, if someone has died and the setting is also a university, that's dark academia to me. So I'm gonna be using a botanist guide to parties and poisons for dark academia and what did I say? <laughs> poisons. I was able to borrow the audiobook from Hoopla and I started that today. Next up is what I'm quote unquote using as my physical read. I'm actually going to be reading an ebook. Again, a lot of these prompts are really centered toward thrillers and horrors as it should be. It's an October readathon. Again, I'm not in the mood. So I am going to read the ebook for Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson, which is on my list of 22 books for 2022. It is going to be my second Renee Watson. I added this book to my digital TBR a couple of months, years ago when I read Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson and loved it. So I actually haven't read the summary for this book in quite a while and I'm excited to not read it. I'm going straight into the book relatively blind. I know I like this author's writing and that's pretty much all I need. Those are all of my updates for you for now. I completed two books, I have two new books on deck, and I will keep you posted as I make other reading progress. Hello, happy Wednesday. I am joining you from the library on my lunch break, and I wanted to show you three books that I just picked up. The first two are graphic novels. If you saw the prompts, one of them is graphic novel. So I picked up Spectacle, which is a book one to a series about two sisters, um, and it's, I believe, set in a carnival of sorts, and essentially one of the sisters is killed and turns into a ghost, and the other sister has to help her find her killer. The other graphic novel I picked up is called Grim Grimoire Noir. It follows Bucky Orson, a gloomy 15 year old um, whose best friend leaves him to hang out with cooler friends. His dad is the town sheriff and wait for it, he lives in Blackwell, a town where all the girls are witches. But when his little sister is kidnapped because of her extraordinary power, Bucky has to get out of his own head and go on a strange journey to investigate the small town that gives him so much grief. In the process, he uncovers the town's painful history and a conspiracy that will change it forever. I thought that this looked really cool. Honestly, if I'm being real, it was just like the cover that kind of caught my eye on this and it's obviously spooky. I'm not a huge graphic novel reader, but I enjoy them when I pick them up. Uh, the last book that I got is my hold for Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid came through and I only have this for three weeks, I think. And I just, 
I really want to read this and I want to read it like right now. It makes me want to disturb all of my spoopathon reading <laughs> plans, but we'll see how I can fit this in in the upcoming week. I've read from Taylor Jenkins Reid two previous times and I really enjoyed Malibu Rising and The Seven Husbands. So I'm excited to get to this book. I definitely find her writing is just utterly hypnotizing to me and I find myself being interested in subjects and people that I normally like wouldn't care about. I was really floored by how much I cared um, about the four surfers in the 80s in Malibu when I read Malibu Rising and I don't care about any of that stuff but Taylor drink and read made me care. Similarly to this, um, this is about a tennis star, Carrie Soto, and I don't care really that much about tennis, like maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. And this is about to make me care about something I don't normally. I have been listening to A Botanist Guide to Parties and Poisons this morning and I am getting some really good progress in on that. So I will give you an update when I have a bit more time, but hope you're having a good day. Hi friends, I'm joining you from the end of this week and I wanted to let you know something else that I have picked up and plan on finishing tonight. I went ahead and picked up Spectacle, which is a graphic novel that I showed you I got from the library and I started this. I'm really, really enjoying it and I wanna finish it this evening and wrap up this vlog with my thoughts on this and my thoughts on A Botanist Guide to Parties and Poisons, which I finished earlier this week. I'm really enjoying the art style of this and I wanted to just show you the some of the chapter cards are so beautiful. Look at how pretty this is. Anyways, so I'm going to finish this tonight and I will check back in with you with my thoughts. I just finished Spectacle and it definitely like, I it's book one and I was kind of hoping I could get away with just checking out this one, but I can't. Like there was a big cliffhanger. So I guess I have to go get book two because I was really enjoying this. I love the art style. The story is really interesting. Again, we follow a sister duo. One of them is murdered and the sister cat has to figure out what happened to her. So I'm liking it a lot. It's set in a circus. It's really colorful. It is very fall-esque and it of course has a little bit of a speculative magical element and the ending. Ooh we're going in a direction. So I'm excited to keep going with this. So let me wrap up my thoughts on A Botanist Guide to Parties and Poisons. This book was so lovely and I was kind of surprised how pleasant and fluffy and lighthearted the tone was. Maybe not fluffy, but lighthearted. So this follows Saffron as she's trying to uncover the attempted murder of a wife of one of her dean persons in her university. Anyways, there's this guy and there's an expedition that's happening and there's a lot of complicated relationships and she's trying to figure out who did what and if the poison was intended for Mrs. Henry or if Mrs. Henry was an accident and it was supposed to hit someone else. And so it was really interesting. It was definitely a puzzle and she's trying to put all the pieces together. Again, it was very light. It was pleasant. It was very lovely. I enjoyed the historical setting, a lot of the etiquette, the way they spoke to each other and the respect and just like the conversations were just the way they were written was very like pleasing to read. And when I say the story is pleasant, like it is about uncovering an attempted murder, but I think I just mean more the tone. Saffron is also a botanist. She is an assistant to Mr. Maxwell, who is accused slash the first suspect in the murder. Like they think he's the murderer. And so that's how she gets sucked in initially is trying to basically acquit him and prove that he didn't do it. It was great. I really enjoyed this. I definitely think I will read from this series again. I think it is a series, the Saffron Everly Mystery series, and I'm excited to keep going with it. I think I would call this like cozy mystery plus dark academia because there were some elements of it that were dark but I feel it was like predominantly a cozy mystery so I enjoyed it. So friends that is it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I finished Book Lovers, I read Spectacle, and I also finished A Botanist Guide to Parties and Poisons. So three books read this week. Oh and I also read The X-Hex. So I finished four books this week. Like I mentioned I didn't get very far in piecing me together so 
that book I'm going to figure out a way to take into this last week of Spoopathon. I can't believe we're entering the last week of this readathon, but I'm really excited. So please subscribe if you would like to see the final video for this vlog. And if you're interested in seeing other content from me, I'd love for you to join me. So other than that, have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.